Hi everybody, uh, Alex Wiseman here again, talking today about analysis of variance, or what we typically call ANOVA. Uh, this is an interesting way to think about looking at the variation in different variables and how that variation associates uh, either among groups or within groups. We'll see what we mean by that. In our uh, research class so far, we've covered several different types of statistics. We've talked about uh, the most basic kind, frequency and normal distribution. We've talked about measures of central tendency and measures of variability. We've talked about correlation and regression, and most recently we've talked about a t-test. And remember that with a t-test, we were interested in comparing the average or the mean for a particular continuous variable between two groups. And we used the example of gender and math scores as a, a sort of running example where we were looking at the average math score between a group of boys and a group of girls to see if there was any statistically significant difference. And we talked about what that meant, how we could look at that using the normal distribution and the tails of the distribution to calculate the probability that we were committing a type 1 error, which simply means that we were rejecting the null hypothesis when we shouldn't have been. Well, now we're taking it a step further, and we're looking at ANOVA. ANOVA is unique because it also looks at the differences between groups, but it's more than two groups now. And it's calculated a little differently, in fact, a lot differently, than the t-test is. Uh, in fact, the way it's calculated is, is closer to a regression analysis than, than anything else. But conceptually, the way that we think about interpreting it, or at least the way that I'm going to recommend thinking about interpreting it, is much more along the lines of a t-test. In other words, comparing differences between groups. So I, I'm not sure if I've shown you this before. This is uh, simply a map, and I know it's a, a kind of a fuzzy copy of a map, that shows you how you might go about selecting different inferential statistical tests. And it starts right here by asking, what type of data do you have? Do you have categorical data? That would be nominal data. Or do you have measurement data? That would be anything else, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now, for us, for, a, uh, for an ANOVA, we're going to go the measurement data route. Because we have, we're going to be working with ordinal, interval, or ratio as our dependent variable. In other words, the thing that we're interested in saying, is this different on average between different groups? Now, the grouping variable is much more categorical, but our dependent variable, the one that we're interested in, in testing differences, is an interval or ratio, usually. Right? And then it asks us, well, what's your research question? Are you interested in a relationship, or are you interested in a group difference? For today, we're interested in a group difference because we're looking at the differences between groups uh, for the average of a specific variable. And then it asks you, how many groups? If you go the one group route, you're doing a one sample t-test. If you go the two groups route, you're doing either an independent or a dependent samples t-test. But today we're going the more than two groups route. And we're going to think about this as sample dependence. Is it an independent sample or a dependent sample? And you remember when we were talking about t-tests, the difference between those two types of samples was if it's an independent sample, then the people or the participants or whoever is in each of the groups is different from those in the other groups. And we used gender when we were doing t-tests to say that boys were boys and girls were girls. And you can't sneak a girl into the boy group and call her a boy because she's always a girl and vice versa. So that would be independent. Dependent would be, would be more like a time series when we had a pretest and a post-test. And we had the same group of people in one t point in time and we gave them a test or an assessment or something. And then at a later point in time, we gave them the same test or a slightly different test. And then we compared their outcomes between those two times. Since it's the same people in each group at each time period, it's dependent because they are what they score later on depends on what they started with at the beginning. Independent is independent. So we're going independent. 
And we are talking specifically today about a one-way ANOVA, which is a also called simple ANOVA. So that's where we are. We've gone from asking what kind of data. We're interested in a dependent variable like a mass score that is interval or ratio. So we've gone the measurement data route or the, the continuous data route or the interval ratio data route. It's whatever route you want to call this. We've asked a particular kind of question. We've said we're interested in the group difference. We've said that we're interested in more than two groups and that we have an independent sample in each of our groups, which leads us to our one-way ANOVA. So what is ANOVA again? Well, it's analysis of variance. That's what it stands for. You can see how we get the actual spelling of ANOVA from analysis of variance. And it is simply examining differences between groups on one or more variables. And these one or more variables that we're examining differences between the groups, these are interval or ratio variables for the most part. Right? We are also talking about the same participants are not being tested more than once. Right? That's why it is an independent sample. And that's why we can end up doing a one-way analysis of variance. We are definitely dealing with more than two groups. In fact, it's three or more. And the test statistic for an ANOVA is the F test. Just like when we were looking at a T test, well, the name of the statistic is in the name of the test. It's a T. Now we're getting an F. <laughs> so why is it called analysis of variance? Well, uh, this is the conceptually important part. Because we're looking at the analysis of variance due to differences in outcome. And those differences in outcome are separated into variance that's due to differences between individuals within groups and variance that's due to differences between groups. Then the two types of variance are compared to each other. So think about it this way. This is sort of the conceptual way to think about it. If we are comparing uh, the differences among individuals within groups, you can see that each of these box plots represents a group. And you can see that by the box plot, the variation around the mean that we have, the mean is this line in the center. Right? And we're looking at how much variation occurs within each of the groups. And then we're looking at how much variation there is between groups. That's this difference right here and this difference right here, right? And you can see between this sample, this uh, example, and this example, that while the mean differences between groups are the same between these two, between A and B, the within group variance is much different because this is a huge range and this is a much smaller range. So we're looking at the difference between the sample means dun, 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 and dun, 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 and we're looking at the difference between the individuals, the variability among individuals within each group and comparing those. And you can see it's very different in example A and example B. That's why it's called analysis of variance because there are two types of variance that we're comparing. Variance on our dependent variable within group and between group. <clears throat> So how is analysis of variance similar to t-test? Well, both compute differences between means, right? That's conceptually the same. But with ANOVA, there are more than two means, right? We just talked about that. There have to be more than two groups that we're comparing. So it's three or more groups. The other thing to remember is that ANOVA is something called an omnibus test. An omnibus test refers to a test that examines the overall differences between groups. So let's say that we had our, our box plots again. I'm just going to do a couple here as an example. And let's say these are our three groups. And we can see that the variance within groups is different, but not, not that different, this, this variance. The real difference comes in the difference in means. And between these two groups, probably not a lot of difference. But this group, much more different. Right? But an omnibus test doesn't tell us that, you know, this is, let's say this is group A, this is group B, and this is group C. It doesn't tell us as an omnibus test that, oh, there's no difference between A and B, but there's a big difference between A and C and B and C. It doesn't do that. 
It just tells us that there's overall differences. Somewhere in these three groups, there is a difference. That's what the F statistic lets us know. And that will become an issue that we can actually address a little later on. But you should know from the beginning that the ANOVA itself is an omnibus test. It does not get into what the specific group differences are between in each individual group. It just tells us there's a difference somewhere. You'll have to figure out where that difference is. So what is simple ANOVA? Well, it's also called one-way analysis of variance because there is only one grouping dimension. Uh, it, it, it could be hair color. Maybe we're using hair color as our grouping dimension, and we could say red or blonde or brown or black. Right? That's more than three groups. But there's only one dimension that we're grouping on, hair color or shirt color or whatever simple way you want to think about it. Um, and we can, we can you know, ramp that up. We could say that we're looking at countries. And the country is the grouping dimension. Well, there could be 170 countries, but the, there's only one grouping dimension. That's country. Another way to look at it is if we're investigating the effects on language development of being in preschool for 5 or 10 or 20 hours per week, that group that children belong to is the one grouping factor. right? That's the 5, 10, or 20 hour per week group. So it's how many hours per week is the one grouping dimension. But th since there are three different types of groups, uh, we can look at the differences between those three group means. Now, Simple ANOVA has some requirements that we have to pay attention to. One is that there is only one dimension or treatment. Right? There's only one dimension, one grouping dimension. Two is that there are more than two levels or two units of the grouping factor. We've already talked about three plus. That should be a plus sign. And third, that we or you are looking at differences across the groups in average scores. And that would be differences in the dependent variable. We can think of the grouping factor as the independent variable. And we can think of the, the uh, average that we're looking at within each group as the dependent. And this is going to be an interval or ratio variable that is going to be on a continuous measurement scale. So what does the ANOVA model look like? Well, random sampling always produces chance variations. Any factor effect, that's the grouping dimension, would thus show up on our data as the factor-driven differences plus chance variations. That would be the error. And so remember I told you earlier that um, conceptually, t-tests and ANOVAs were more similar. But the way that we actually calculate them, ANOVAs are much more like an, a regression. And this should look somewhat like a regression equation, right? Where, here, where you have your outcome or dependent variable, and then you have your independent variable, and then you have some error. So the one-way ANOVA model analyzes situations where chance variations are normally distributed. So if we could, we could think of each of these normal distributions as a group, right? and we are assuming that the group mean, or that the, the individual scores for whatever our dependent variable is, are normally distributed within each group, this is what it would look like. Right? And there's what the equation would look like if we were assuming this. Remember, this is the same here. So the error, this is the error, are assumed to be from a distribution, a normal distribution, and the parameters of the model, remember there are parameters and there are statistics. Parameters are for population, statistics are for samples. The parameters of the model are the population means and the common standard deviation. So each of these is the mean, is the population mean, or the assumed population mean for each of those groups. When we come back in the next part of our screencast, we're going to talk about some of the components of ANOVA that you will see when you calculate this out.